I'm going to let you off the hook here. No one on earth is wired from birth to be good with money. I get emails and comments all the time from people lamenting the fact that they don't seem to be able to stick to a budget or they can't get their heads around investments or they struggle to have financial conversations with their partner. But we all know people who do seem to be good with money. They don't seem to struggle with these things. So what are they doing? that we're not. Hi and welcome back to the channel. My name is Pete Matthew and I'm a chartered financial planner based here in the UK. And this video is brought to you by Meaningful Academy. More on that in a little bit. Oh, and we have 100,000 subscribers now. So thank you so much for that. Let's talk very briefly about why we are bad with money and then we'll get into how to improve. Now I used the word wired earlier on. We're not wired to be good with money and by that, I mean, we haven't evolved as a species to be naturally good at the sort of skills that we need to handle money well. If you think about it, everything about how we operate our finances is about the future. We're either saving for a holiday next year, that's the near future, or we're putting money into a pension to retire in 30 years time, the very far distant future, or maybe we're putting insurance in place to protect our family in case the very worst happens to us, which hopefully won't happen anytime soon. So much of our effort is about planning for the future, and yet we have limited capacity to think very far ahead. I mean, we've got more capacity than my dogs have, for sure, but still, the future is murky at best. It's an abstract concept. And that uncertainty about the future leads to fear. We have an inbuilt fight or flight mechanism that runs incredibly deep in our brain physiology. This has served us really well when we were faced with sort of primal life or death threats, but it doesn't stack up very well when we're thinking about, I don't know, the impact of central bank decisions or general elections on the economy and how all that will affect our retirement planning. We just can't get our heads around it. It's too complex and too abstract. And again, fear and paralysis can be the result. We also have no control over any of those things, and yet they will impact our future. That's scary as well. We live very much in the now, so it's hard to make decisions that will serve us well in the future when perhaps the other option is short-term gain, short-term pleasure right now. The whole financial system is just too big, it's too complex and too scary for us to make anywhere approaching rational decisions about. And we're also busy. We just don't have the time to dedicate to thoughtful, careful decision making. So basically, the deck is completely stacked against us by our evolution and by the size and complexity of the system that we're faced with. Financial planning demands that we be rational but we don't really have a chance in hell of that happening. So let's just give ourselves a little bit of a break, shall we? But how is it the case then that some people seem to be better than us at working all this stuff out? Well, one way is the use of heuristics. That is simple rules that encapsulate timeless truths about finance. We can then rely on, hang on to these things when the complexity of it all just seems overwhelming. So here's some examples. One of my favorites is businesses and bricks businesses and bricks. That's the two asset classes that have proven over decades, centuries even, to build wealth over the long term. Businesses and bricks, shares or equities, and property. If you find yourself paralyzed trying to choose between UK smaller companies or uh, European growth funds in your pension, just remember that they would both come under the banner of businesses, equities. So you'll probably be okay with either or both. Another heuristic is to pay yourself first. So when you get paid, the first thing you assign your money to is either reducing high interest debt or saving and investing for the future. And you do that before you pay rent or your mortgage, before you pay your bills, even before you eat. The first priority for your money is to improve your financial situation. And so when you're faced with a choice each payday, this simple pay yourself first heuristic is easy to recall and simple to apply. Another simple heuristic reminder that investing is a multi-decade endeavor, that should make it easier to ignore short-term market events and stop you worriedly checking your portfolio on your phone before you go to sleep. Pound cost averaging, the 50-30-20 rule of budgeting, Minimize costs and taxes. These are all high level rules of thumb that will serve us really well. Heuristics are just one form of behavioral scaffolding, call it. Uh, external support that we can use to hang on to 
when we're struggling under our own steam. And we can take that idea of scaffolding further. We can build structures that make decision making easier over time so that maybe eventually we don't actually need the support anymore. We can set rules for ourselves when it comes to things like investment or spending decisions. So we could say that we never will make a decision about our finances in the evening when we're tired after a long day. Instead, we're only going to make decisions about our finances on, I don't know, a Sunday morning when we're feeling energized and refreshed. That does depend a little bit on how Saturday night went though. With spending decisions, we can decide that we'll always keep that item in our online shopping basket for at least 24 hours before hitting the buy button. I tend to say 72 hours actually, because more often than not, in that time, I come to realize that I don't really need the thing that I'm thinking about buying. Other kinds of behavioral scaffolding, like pros and cons lists, decision trees or checklists, they can help us work through big decisions by forcing us to slow down and consider things more carefully. Remember, that hardwired fight or flight mechanism hurts us because it prompts us to make really quick and ill-considered decisions which we very often might later regret. Anything that slows us down is likely to lead to a better outcome. If this is helpful so far, you know what to do. Press like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. It really helps, so thank you in advance for that. Next up is harnessing the power of community. There is a caveat to this, which I'll get to in a minute, but one way to help ourselves get better with money is to realize that there are others out there who have been where we are and from whom we can learn. So maybe you have a family member who you perceive has been successful with their finances. Could you maybe ask them for help? Or maybe you've got a group of friends in a similar boat to you and you can agree to help each other out by maybe getting together once a month to discuss financial challenges and working things out as a group. And of course, these days, it's never been easier to join one of any number of online communities, but you do have to tread carefully here. Look for communities that are well moderated, that have rules about what can and can't be discussed, and always sense check anything you learn in any online community. A healthy community, whether online or in real life, can support and nurture your financial growth. But be wary of anything that's too dogmatic and discourages you from thinking for yourself. You know at AA meetings you have to introduce yourself as, my name's Pete and I'm an alcoholic. Well, there's an acknowledgement there that we have an issue and we need the group to help us stick to the program. That's what a good community will do for us. And an absolutely brilliant community can be found at Meaningful Academy. That's a community that's more than 2,000 people strong now. There are three phases to Meaningful Academy. Financial Foundations is for you if you're at the start of your financial journey and you want to know how to set and stick to a budget get out of bad debt and get your head in the right place to succeed with your finances. And Financial Foundations is free. Build Wealth is for you if you've got the basics in place and you wanna build for the future. And Retirement Planning is for those looking to plan and execute the perfect retirement, whatever that means for you. Build Wealth and Retirement Planning are paid for courses, but use the coupon code YouTube at the checkout for a discount as a thank you for watching this video. The community aspect of the Academy is really, really strong with very active private Facebook groups with loads of people ready to help answer your questions. And there's a monthly live Q&A call with me where you can ask me anything. So check it all out at MeaningfulAcademy.com and don't forget that coupon code YouTube if you sign up for one of the paid courses. Everyone I know who is good with money has committed to a lifetime of learning and improving themselves and their understanding of personal finance. I get people who started this late in their 50s and 60s even, but whose future is massively different than it would have been because they've grasped the need to get with the program. And then I get folks in their 20s who are setting themselves up for a brilliant future life. Improving ourselves requires knowing ourselves, our weaknesses, our tendencies, our blind spots, and then looking to overcome them with the things that we've talked about, heuristics, behavioral scaffolding, the power of community, and continually improving our knowledge and understanding. Nothing worth doing comes easily. If you wanna improve your financial situation, it takes time and it takes work. There's no silver bullet and you probably won't win the lottery, let's face it. So are you with me? Let's do this. If you're not already, subscribe to the channel and I'll give you everything you need to know and everything you need to do to secure your financial future. 
If this video was helpful, then do give it a like so that YouTube will show it to others who need to see it. And while you're waiting for the next one, maybe watch this video. It's about how to retire well, even if you can only start small. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.